The late afternoon sun cast long shadows across the cluttered study as Alva traced her finger across the aged parchment. Dust motes danced in the golden light, swirling around the faded ink that depicted a maze of twisting tunnels unlike any sewer system she'd ever seen. This map, unearthed from a dusty trunk in the attic of the old Grimaldi estate, was unlike anything she'd encountered in her years as a cartographer. It pulsed with an unsettling energy, a secret melody only her fingertips seemed to hear. Most peculiar, she muttered, her brow furrowed in concentration. The map was clearly of her city, Ethel, but the labyrinth it revealed was hidden beneath the bustling streets. Curiosity, a constant companion in Alva's life, gnawed at her. What secrets lay buried beneath her familiar city? A thrill of anticipation danced down her spine. This wasn't just a map, it was an invitation to adventure. But where to begin? She needed someone who could decipher the cryptic symbols that adorned the edges of the parchment, someone who knew the hidden stories of Ethel. A name popped into her mind, a name whispered with a mix of curiosity and derision in scholarly circles Elias Thorne. Alva slipped through the narrow alleyways of Ethel, ducking behind a cart as it rolled by, the pungent scent of roasting chestnuts filling her nostrils. The city bustled with activity, merchants hawking their wares and nobles strolling arm in arm, oblivious to the underworld that lay hidden beneath their feet. She paused at a shadowy corner, watching as Elias emerged from a tavern, a sly grin playing at the edges of his lips. He was infamous among the scholars for his unorthodox methods and questionable reputation, but his knowledge of forgotten lore was unmatched. Perhaps he could shed some light on the mysterious map she'd discovered. As she approached, Elias's gaze flicked up, meeting hers with a knowing glint. Ah, Miss Grimaldi, he drawled, his voice smooth as silk. I thought you'd never come to me. Alva straightened her spine feeling a mixture of trepidation and determination course through her veins. I need your help, she said, handing him the map. This map depicts a network of tunnels beneath the city. I believe it leads to something called the Fount. Do you know what it could be? Elias studied the map for a moment, his brow furrowing as he traced a finger along the twisting tunnels. I've heard whispers of such a place, he murmured. Legend has it that the fount grants immense power to whoever drinks from it. Alva's heart raced. But who would guard such a thing? A sly grin spread across Elias's face. The same people who seek to claim it, I suppose. It's a dangerous game we're playing, Miss Grimaldi. Even if you find the fount, you won't be safe until you've taken what you came for and made it back out alive. I understand the risks, she said, stealing herself. I need that power to protect my city from Serafina. Elias's expression darkened. Ah, yes. Serafina. Her forces are closing in on Ethel even as we speak. You'll have to hurry if you hope to reach the fount before she does. Alva nodded, feeling a sense of determination well up within her. Then let's get started. Together, they disappeared into the shadows the echo of their footsteps fading into the darkness as they embarked on a perilous quest through the hidden tunnels ahead of them lay a labyrinth of twisting passages, monstrous guardians, and a magic more potent than anything Alva could have imagined. But with Elias by her side, she felt ready to face whatever dangers awaited them. For the fate of her city depended upon their success. The tunnels grew colder and more damp as they wound deeper into the earth the air thick with the scent of ancient stone and rustling vermin. Alva felt her heart race as they navigated the winding path, her senses heightened, her every instinct honed by years of training. She knew that any misstep could prove fatal, but she refused to let fear slow her down. At last they came to a chamber lit by a flickering torch, its walls adorned with strange, arcane symbols. In the center of the room, a massive fountain glimmered with an eerie, otherworldly light. This is it, Elias whispered, his voice barely audible over the sound of their breathing. The fount. With trembling hands, Alva drew her sword, her grip tight as steel as she prepared to face whatever guardians lay between her and the fountain. Elias, too, drew a dagger, 
his movements fluid and confident. Together, they crept forward, their eyes scanning the darkness for any signs of movement. As they drew nearer, the fountain's light grew stronger, its strange radiance casting grotesque shadows across the walls. The water within it churned and boiled, as if it were alive, as if it were angry at their intrusion. Alva felt a chill race up her spine, but she didn't waver. She would not fail her city. Suddenly, a harsh, guttural growl echoed through the chamber, and a monstrous form lurched out of the shadows. Its skin was gray and scaled, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. It reeked of rot and decay, and its massive claws gleamed in the flickering torchlight. You do not belong here. It rasped, its voice deep and gravelly. Leave while you still can. Alva felt a surge of adrenaline as she readied herself for battle. I will not be turned away, she shouted, her voice ringing through the chamber. I have come for what is mine. With a battle cry, she charged forward, her sword swinging through the air with deadly precision. Elias followed close behind, his dagger flashing in the dim light as he darted around the monster's massive form. The battle was fierce and brutal, lasting long into the night. The monster's strength was immense, its attacks powerful enough to send Alva flying through the air with every strike. But she would not be deterred. With every wound she inflicted, she felt a surge of confidence and determination course through her veins. At last, with a final, massive swipe of its claws, the monster crumpled to the ground, its lifeless body slumping against the fountain. Alva staggered back, her breath coming in ragged gasps as she surveyed the carnage around her. Elias, too, was panting heavily, his dagger still clutched tightly in his hand. Carefully, Alva approached the fountain, her sword still raised in defense. She knelt before it, her eyes searching the water for some sign of what she was meant to do. Then, with shaking hands, she reached out and touched the cool, smooth surface. Nothing happened at first. But then, as if in response to her touch, the water began to stir, churning and boiling as it rose up around her. A sense of power coursed through her veins, filling her with strength and confidence. She had done it. She had found the fount. Now she would bring that power back to Ethel and save her city from Serafina's grasp. Turning back to Elias, she extended a hand to him. Thank you she said, her voice barely more than a whisper. Your help has been invaluable. Elias took her hand, his grip firm and reassuring. You're welcome, he said with a wink. But remember, the real challenge still lies ahead. Be careful on your way back. Together, they made their way through the tunnels, their steps lighter now that they knew the fate of Ethel rested in their hands. But as they emerged from the darkness and back into the light of day, Alva couldn't shake the feeling that they had only just begun to face the dangers that lay ahead. Word of their discovery quickly spread through the city, fueling hope in the hearts of those who had been so long without it. The people of Ethel began to gather at the gates, cheering their heroes and begging for news of their success. Alva and Elias shared what they could, but they knew that the true test would come when they confronted Serafina herself. Days turned into weeks, and still they prepared— training and strategizing with their small band of allies. Alva had become a symbol of hope and determination, inspiring those around her to believe that they could fight against the forces of darkness and win. Finally, the day came when they would march against Serafina. The sky was overcast, the air heavy with tension and anticipation. As they made their way toward the palace, the people of Ethel lined the streets, their faces pale and their eyes filled with fear, but also with a fierce determination to defend their home. The battle was brutal, and the casualties were high. Alva fought with a ferocity she didn't know she possessed, her sword singing through the air as she cut down Serafina's minions. Elias was at her side, his dagger flashing as he moved through the chaos with uncanny grace. But it was not enough. The odds were too great— and Serafina herself was proving to be an adversary unlike any they had faced before. In desperation, Alva turned to the fount, using its power to fuel her strength 
and that of her allies. The tide of battle began to turn, and soon, they were closing in on Serafina herself. As they fought their way through her inner circle, Alva could feel the weight of the ancient magic pulsing through her veins, granting her abilities she had never dreamed possible. Finally, with a powerful thrust of her sword, she found herself face to face with Serafina. The witch's eyes blazed with hatred and defiance, but Alva could see the fear lurking beneath the surface. She knew that she was stronger now, that the power of the fount had made her unstoppable. With a cry of rage and determination, Alva lunged forward, her sword meeting Serafina's in a clash of steel that echoed through the chamber. The battle between them was epic, a clash of wills and magic that seemed to shake the very foundations of the world. But in the end, it was Alva who emerged victorious, her sword thrust deep into Serafina's heart. As Serafina's lifeless body crumpled to the ground, the power that had been flowing through the fountain dissipated, leaving Alva and her allies drained and exhausted, but victorious. The people of Ethel poured onto the throne room floor, cheering their heroes, tears streaming down their faces as they embraced one another in relief and joy. Elias, who had fought at Alva's side the entire battle, staggered over to her, his chest heaving as he struggled to catch his breath. You did it, my queen, he gasped, his eyes shining with pride and admiration. You defeated her. Alva, still breathing heavily, looked down at the sword in her hand, the weight of it somehow more bearable now that she knew she had used it for the greater good. We did it, Elias, she replied, her voice stronger than she expected. We all did this together. As the celebrations continued into the night, Alva found herself withdrawing from the reverie, seeking solace in the quiet of her chambers. She knew that her role in the city had changed forever, that the people now looked to her for guidance and leadership. But the weight of that responsibility was almost more than she could bear. Late into the night, she found herself unable to sleep, her mind racing with thoughts of what the future might hold. Would she be able to keep Ethel safe from those who would seek to use the power of the fount for their own gain? Could she find a way to harness its magic without becoming consumed by it? These questions and more plagued her restless mind, refusing to be silenced. Finally, as the first rays of dawn crept through the cracks in her shutters, she rose, determined to confront these doubts head-on. She knew that her journey was far from over but she also knew that she was no longer alone. She had allies who believed in her, who would stand by her side through whatever challenges lay ahead. And with that knowledge, she felt a renewed sense of strength and purpose. Stealing herself, she left her chambers and made her way to the throne room, where the people of Ethel waited with bated breath for their new queen to address them. The air was thick with anticipation and hope as she ascended the dais, her heart racing. She took a deep breath, trying to steady her nerves, and raised her voice, calling out to her subjects. People of Ethel, she began, her voice echoing through the chamber. I stand before you as your queen, but know this, I am not some distant ruler, untouchable and unapproachable. I am one of you, a daughter of this city, and I vow to serve you with all of my heart, all of my soul, and all of my strength. The time has come for us to put the dark days of Serafina's reign behind us, and to forge a new path forward, together. A path of peace, prosperity, and unity. But I cannot do this alone. I need your help, your guidance, and your trust. Alva paused, letting her words sink in, and then continued, Ethel has survived great trials and tribulations in the past, and it is my belief that we will do so again. But only if we stand united, only if we work together, and only if we remember that we are stronger when we face adversity side by side. The people of Ethel erupted into applause, their faces lit up with hope and determination. As the cheering died down, Alva smiled, feeling a sense of peace wash over her. She had no idea what challenges lay ahead, but she knew that she would face them with courage, with wisdom and with the love and support of her people. As the celebrations continued, Elias, ever at her side, whispered to her, You're going to be a great queen, Alva. She smiled at him, 
her eyes shining with tears of gratitude. I couldn't have done it without you, my friend. She replied, squeezing his hand. Together, we will make Ethel the greatest city it can be. And so, with the power of the fount fading but its lessons forever etched into her heart, Alva began her reign as queen of Ethel. She worked tirelessly to rebuild the city, repairing the damage done by Serafina and her followers. She established new laws that protected the people and ensured that the power of the fount would never again be used for evil. She forged alliances with neighboring cities and kingdoms, strengthening Ethel's position in the world. Alva, crowned queen of Ethel, surveyed her city from the palace balcony. The cheers of her people echoed faintly, a constant reminder of the responsibility she now bore. The fount's power pulsed faintly within her, a constant thrum beneath her skin. It had granted her victory, but a disquieting quietude had settled where the thrill of battle once resided. Elias, ever perceptive, approached her. You seem troubled, your majesty. Alva sighed. The power, she confessed. It feels unnatural. Like a borrowed flame that could consume me as easily as light my way. Elias's brow furrowed. The legends speak of a price, a darkness that creeps in with borrowed power. But there's also a chance to use it for good, to illuminate the path for others. Alva's gaze swept across the city, taking in the rebuilding efforts, the hopeful glint in people's eyes. But for how long, Elias? Can I wield such power without succumbing to its corrupting influence? Elias placed a hand on her shoulder. Perhaps the true test lies not in resisting the darkness, but in acknowledging it. You must be vigilant, Queen Alva. Use the power sparingly, only when all other options are exhausted. Remember, true strength lies not in borrowed magic, but in the will of the people you lead. Alva met his gaze, a spark of determination rekindled in her eyes. You're right. The fount's power may be a tool, but it won't define my reign. I will lead with compassion, wisdom, and the unwavering support of my people. Years passed. Ethel flourished under Alva's just rule. The fount's power remained a secret a last resort spoken of only in hushed whispers. Alva championed education and diplomacy, forging alliances that secured Ethel's place in the world. Though the memory of the fount's potent magic lingered, it served as a constant reminder. True power resided not in wielding the extraordinary, but in fostering the extraordinary within others. The legend of the fount became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the seductive allure and perilous consequences of unchecked power. Alva's legacy wasn't built on wielding magic, but on the wisdom to use it responsibly, a testament to the true strength that lay within a just and compassionate leader. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to stay updated with our latest stories, give us a like if you want to see more, and drop a comment below to let us know your thoughts.